For spinal issues, it, it looks horrendous. You guys have had a hazard on that, she would be a failure. Corliss has been suffering this for that long and it could have been easily avoided. different video to usual. It's um, somewhat half of a story time, somewhat a journey I guess as well because Corliss is currently in the back. I know you guys can't see her but we're on route to the vet. Um, we're hoping all is okay um, but let me just get into all that and explain why we're going to the vets because I think it would be interesting for you all. I would have done an Instagram post on this but I feel it was better to explain everything through a YouTube video just because of how much information there is to go into it basically. So a lot of you will know that when we got Corla she was kept in quite a small cage and she was locked in there for about uh, four years. Um, she had sores in her hocks which likely resulted from her being kept on a perch that was very very high. Uh, when we got her she couldn't open her wings and she was just horrendously atrophied. So obviously we worked through all of this with her. Now, we have been working through all of this for nearly two and a half years now and it's been going amazingly, you know, she, <laughs> there she is. She's constantly been improving. As some of you know, Corliss, <laughs> Corliss has been free flying for a while now. And it's been going well, but we've noticed that she's been really struggling with the exploratory aspect or what some people call looping. We have been thinking that this is likely due to the lack of confidence, lack of skill, potentially still some atrophy there, um, and she's been improving, so we didn't think too much of it. And then we went flying with her friends, Flying Orion. So this was the first time Corliss actually flew with another bird, and it was incredible. Honestly, she was so excited. It was so nice to see. While both birds were in the sky, we noticed there was a huge difference in the way they were flying. Nash and I had always thought this was just Corliss's posture right now and it was improving because it was. We never thought much more of it, but seeing Orion flying next to Corliss, we noticed there was quite a massive difference between them. Then later chatting to Orion's owner, we actually found out that birds can get scoliosis. This is something we had no idea was possible. I mean, of course it is. You know, anybody can, we just never considered it. We started thinking and discussing things a bit more, you know, what are the likeliness of Corliss having it, etc, etc. We don't know the likeliness, but there is definitely a lot of things relating Corliss' spine that have been going on for years that we never even considered. Now, Corliss has always struggled descending. We have really worked hard to teach her the skill to make her confident with it. And you know what, she can do amazing sometimes and other times, she's just terrified to do it. That's one massive pointer. She also never flies indoors. She can, but she never does. Uh, obviously she struggles to land on us outdoors. She can't glide outdoors. Keep in mind she's been free flying over a year now and has never learned to glide. We were hoping that Orion would actually show her how to, but that hasn't happened. But those are just a few things that we've kind of noticed over the past couple of years. But again, we thought this was just a lack of skill. We never thought too much more of it. And even when Carlos had her vet checkup last year, the vet never brought it up. So again, we never thought anything of it. Now, chatting with uh, Flying Orion's owner, they told us about another macaw that has scoliosis and we reached out to them. So this other macaw um, flies in the exact same fashion that Carlos flies. And this other macaw also can't land on the ground, uh, sorry, can't land on people. And when they try to land on a human, they usually go to the ground. They also struggle to glide. They can glide, but it's messy, whereas Corliss can't glide. So this has got us thinking that potentially there is an issue with Corliss's spine. Now this could be something genetic that she got as a chick, or it could be because she was kept in such a horrible kind of small cage, bent over a lot of time. Again, proof of that with how uh, sore her hocks were when we first got her. So, we contacted our avian vet. There's nothing saying that this is definitely a spinal issue, but regardless, our vet, who is incredible, shout out to Madonna from Ark and Coatridge. Um, we love her and to Donna, to all of our birds. So, she wanted to see Corliss. She does agree with us that that's a little bit strange. We've got images of Corliss flying, we've got videos of Corliss flying, and it just it doesn't look right. 
So again, we never thought anything different of this until we seen her flying next to another bird. So yeah, we're on route to the vets right now, as I've already said, and I will keep you updated on that front, but here's the story so far, and uh, wish us and Corliss luck. So that's Carlos dropped off. We are extremely exhausted. It is very early. We are not morning people. When we were dropping Carlos off, we managed to bump into our avian vet. Absolutely love her. She came running down to us instantly to say hello. Amazing person. Um, anyway, we had a quick chat and she instantly was saying she could tell from the photo that I said that something wasn't quite right. And um, her instant was fused spine. That's instantly what she went to that Carlos is some kind of fused spine. Now if that's genetic or caused by being kept into a small cage, we don't know. We obviously don't have x-ray results yet, so I'll keep you guys updated on that later in the video. But yeah, what we were told now was that basically the birds that she has seen with fused spines usually have chronic pain and are found plucking and uh, some have been even found to chew down to the bone from the pain. So she's thinking the only reason that Corliss isn't plucking um, is because free flight has kind of been therapeutic for her and also we we're providing plenty of stimulation. Now I'm not trying to like, you know, up herself or anything, but it's basically, let's face it, the care for parrots in general and the entire world isn't great. I'm not trying to say we're the best. Obviously there's, there's plenty of things we could still do better. But what I'm trying to say is that just the birds that avian vets see in the UK usually aren't kept in the greatest conditions, usually kept in an all seed diet, etc, etc. So I'm, I'm glad that our avian vet thinks that we're doing the right thing by Corliss and uh, we don't know if this means she'll be on life of pain meds or what's going to happen, but I thought I would film very quickly before I forget all the information. Now we're heading home to sort out the rest of the flock. They end up in that part of the back amputated. Now, obviously, we don't need to do that with Corla because mm -hmm. she's not that as severe as that. However, she still has pain there because she still gets sores on her hocks. Right. So she still, they're not as bad, but she's still choosing when she's resting to walk back the way to take the pain off. Yeah. Because she needs gabapentin. Okay. Right. And she made that long term. Um, she's also got some heart disease. Um, some arteriosclerosis, and that's just due to poor diet before you got her. Mm -hmm. um, that's not reversible, however, she doesn't need any treatment for it. As long as we keep her diet low in fat, she shouldn't ever have a problem with it. Right, okay. In terms of free flight, are we to continue free flying her just in, obviously, um, beginner locations, so very, very open spaces? Okay, so for anyone who didn't really catch what the vet said over the phone call, because um, I did obviously cut it quite short, I don't want to give up too many details, etc, etc. Um, Corliss has a fused spine. I'm a bit in shock, as you can tell, there's more than just spinal issues. Corliss not only has spinal issues, but also has had chronic pain ever since she had them. Now, we don't know if this is genetic or if this is um, something caused by a small cage. There is no way to know. But what we do know is that there has been pain for a long time and it's been proven with the fact that she sits. Um, if you've been following us on Instagram, you'll have seen this. Parrots, imagine it's the parrot foot, and then they'll also have kind of, I want to say the elbow area, obviously it's their leg. They'll have the hock here. Now what happens is a parrot is usually meant to sit like this. Well, kind of more straighter, but yeah. And then what Corliss does is she sits like this. So her hocks get sores on them. I'll pop a photo right here for you. Now, we've always thought this was due to incorrect positioning of perches and incorrect perch sizes in her last homes, which we did know that the perches were very, very high, so she had to sit at a very, very abnormal position. Corliss has obviously been in pain for her entire life by the sounds of things, so she will have to be on painkillers for the rest of her life following this. Um, still very much in shock from all this, as you can tell. Um, on top of that, Corliss also has heart disease. Uh, we'll make a whole 
different video discussing some more things about that, but very quickly, that was caused by feeding her a parrot seed mix. A parrot specific seed mix. Four years. Four years was enough to give a young macaw heart disease. Now what do you think is happening to birds that are getting fed just seed mixes for their lives? How much pain must they be in? How much must they be suffering? Please, if you can, do your research, get your birds onto the correct diets, get them onto veg, get them eating at least half veg. Um, don't obviously feed full veg, full veg diet can be very bad if you're not getting enough nutrients. If you guys are needing help, we've got a free file on our website that's 18 pages long that'll teach you how to get your bird on veg. It even has recipes that are completely free to download. I'll link it in the description for you. But please, don't sit and go, oh, my bird won't eat veg, so I'm not gonna bother trying to get it on. Do it, or else your bird might end up like Carlos and have heart disease. Because for us, it's quite painful to imagine that Carlos has been suffering this for that long and it could have been easily avoided if people had just bothered to try over. her. We're gonna be going to pick her up very soon and I'll update you guys more there, I guess, um, once I kind of get over the shock um, and kind of calm down from the anger of how easy it would have been to avoid all of this. So we've got two one mil syringes here. One can be for the gabapentin, one for the medicant. So normal spine, normal spine, and see how it takes a massive mm -hmm. dip and comes back up. It shouldn't do that. It should come straight out, right? Right. So basically this is all getting pinched and causing lots of spinal pain. They will be until we get a set routine with her um, but that's you guys basically filled in on our life today and our journey that we've had with Corliss and it has been very stressful for us but it's important to share basically if you guys have a suspicion that there is anything different or wrong with your bird can be so small take them to the vet just just do it our vet was able to tell from one photo of Corliss flying that something wasn't right take them to the vet get them checked out you, you know you'll be doing them a favor and we want to say a massive thank you to Cole who is Orion's owner for giving us the heads up about this getting us in touch with another owner that has a, a parrot with a fused spine and basically convincing us to do these x-rays because without you dude she would probably still be in pain so honestly thank you we, we honestly we appreciate you so much and so does Corliss although she's very quiet right now which is surprising but we'll see you guys probably over Instagram because we don't make YouTube videos very often anymore. I'll try to get back into the habit at some point, but we're very busy. So yeah, bye.